So welcome to nuances of the portrait uh, painting. And today, this is our first session, and I want to talk about skin tones and how to mix skin tones, specifically using the Gamblin's Reclaimed Earth Color set, uh, which you'll see here on my palette. And I just want to read you a real quick you may have read this already, but I want to read you a little um, note about this set. The, the Ohio and Mississippi rivers are among the most polluted in America, not from litter, but from the Industrial Revolution when America's unquenchable thirst for energy exploited the land in its quest for coal. Today, thousands of square miles of coal mines lie abandoned and improperly sealed. And when rainwater seeps into the underground mines, it becomes contaminated with toxic levels of heavy metals and acidity. The contaminated water then flows into streams and rivers where the metals oxidize and turn yellow, orange, and red. Officially, the term is acid mine drainage, AMD. Unofficially, it's called toxic sludge, and it's left once thriving ecosystems unable to support life. For over a decade, artist John Sabra and engineer Guy Reifler, environmentalist Michelle Shively, and a team of students at Ohio University have been trying to develop a sustainable solution to the problem, and they have. The process begins with collecting contaminated water in large tanks, and then to neutralize the water's acidity, a base is added, then oxygen. It'd be interesting to know what that base is, actually. Um, this causes the dissolved iron to crystallize and settle. And the result, clean water on the top and non-toxic iron oxide pigment on the bottom. And the clean water is returned to the river where it's safe for aquatic life. And the iron oxides are dried into light, fast, and safe artist pigment. The pigment is heated to various temperatures to achieve the color. The team has discovered that within just one year after cleanup, life returns to these once barren waters. This is just amazing to me that um, we can take pollution and then turn it into artist colors. This came from the Gamblin website, by the way. So Gamblin teamed up with these people to, to make these colors. So we have three colors that we're gonna be working with tonight and as our base. And I'm gonna turn them around so that you can see them better. The first one is called Iron Violet. The second one is called Brown Ochre. And the third one is called Rust Red. So what I noticed working with these pigments is they're a little, not gritty, but they have a little more, I feel a little more pigment um, in it when I start to mix, as opposed to say, picking up a yellow ochre or something like that, which is an interesting fact about the color. I don't know if you'll notice it. I did a little bit. It, it doesn't make it better or worse. It just is what it is. Um, and by the way, the way that you can take a, a ochre or an iron oxide, like you know, natural pigments coming from the, from the clay or the earth, the way that you uh, can, can have these different colors with say yellow ochre is exactly the same way they worked with these, which is by heat. So if you heat um, this iron oxide, which is yellow ochre, it'll go more reddish. You can get a red ochre or you can get a brown ochre and it's all about the heat process. Let's take a look at these for a moment and then we're gonna see how we're gonna mix some different skin tones based on um, people that I found in my collection of photographs. So this first one is the Iron Violet. And then I'll put the second one here, which is gonna be Brown Ochre. When it's dark, they almost look the same. So it's always good for you to know in advance if you keep your colors organized so you know what's what. This last one is Rust Red. It's, it's kind of like a red oxide, but these are not as transparent as brown oxide or red oxide. They have more pigment load to them. Now, the first thing that I like to do when I'm trying to mix color or skin tones 
is, is a trick that I learned from the Munzel color system um, process by, by actually mixing out. So what you want to do is see what happens. Mm. Let's see what happens when we pull it off and, um, and we mix it with some white, okay? So let's just to mix up a basic value structure because when you're trying to find any color, the three things that you always want to look at are hue, what color family it comes from, red, blue, yellow. Value, how light or dark is the color. And chroma. Chroma is how intense. So if you look over here at my side colors, you can see right away the most intense color is this one here, the cad red light. And then the yellow. The ochre is down on the spectrum. It's a lot more gray, so to speak. So hue, value, chroma are the three things that describe color. And that's how you find a given color. The second one is going to be brown ochre. So if we pull the brown ochre out, it's it's got a gorgeous little rusty color, right? You know, it's warm. And so, but you guys can see it better here. You see how beautiful warm brown that is? I mean, look at the difference between these two right away. This one is more purpley. This one's warmer brown, right? And you want to mix up a nice little value scale when you're doing this. Don't be lazy about it. You know, get a nice little scale going. And then the last one is our rust red. Remember, these are going to be our base colors for finding skin tones for tonight's group. Now, tonight, on this demo, I'm going to be using photographs. There is absolutely no replacement for a live model when you're looking at skin tones and true skin tones. The photography just doesn't do it justice. But since I don't have five people that I can sit in front of me for you to see, we're going to have to do the next best thing, which is a photograph. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of us have to work from when we're doing uh, paintings of people we know. In this um, session, the next few weeks that we work together, I would love for you to pick your own photograph of someone you know, or you love, or you care about, or someone you'd like to do a portrait of, and let's all do a different one. I'll, I'll be doing um, based on uh, the different people that I have in my collection, and Hopefully you'll do some in yours and we can walk through them because everything I'm going to show you tonight is relative to anyone you want to paint. Okay. Mm. Now, so we have a base going here. So let's say, and I'm going to switch the camera now to, um, to both. So you can see both now. So this is a picture of my little, niece, grandniece, actually, <laughs> um, when she was a munchkin, uh, uh, a lot younger. She's grown now. She's got her master's degree and lives in DC and very successful. She's, a, she's adorable. She has parents that are Hispanic from Colombia and from Alcapulco, Mexico. So she has got a lot of uh, Hispanic blood, also Spanish. If they did their um, 23andMe, I think she has Spanish in her as well as Portuguese, probably a little Italian, but a lot of indigenous. Her father was very dark, is very dark. Um, her mother's more lighter skin. What's interesting about this photo, it's not dramatic in that it has a really solid shadow, but it does have a really nice light on it. So you might find yourself with the photograph one thing that I want you to look for, if you do pick your own photograph, I want you to pick something that has at least some shadow area and some light area. The first thing that we do is we try to find what is the middle value. So when we're doing that, 
we can start by holding something up. Like if I hold this up to her forehead, it looks too gray. So when you start to um, verbalize what's wrong with the color, it'll help you to find the color. So um, if I have a piece of acetate on here or plastic, so if I put a piece of plastic and I put that color on her forehead, it's really obvious, okay, it's, it's not the right color. So for me, in my lighting, it's too dark and it's too brown, right? So what I would do is say, oh, okay, it has to go warmer. So now I'm going into that rust color and I can just wipe that off. This is such a great way to find color is by using the acetate, okay? And that's a little dark. So now I'm gonna mix these two together and that's almost the perfect color. I can't even see my, my mark. Okay, so what I just did is I went up the value scale. So let's go back to this again. I went up the value scale towards the light. I added a little bit more warmth into from the rust red into the brown ochre and nailed it right away. You couldn't even tell the difference between the two. So what I've also done is I put out some helper colors, like our basic Zorn palette that we've used in the past, which is you know, the, the basic Apelles palette, so to speak, white, yellow ochre, um, a red, he probably used red ochre or something like that. This is cad red light and black. I also have, in case I need it for a particular skin tone, some true Naples yellow. And it's gonna say genuine uh, Naples yellow. This one happens to be by Vasari. It's heavy. It's not a fake Naples yellow. It's a single pigment Naples yellow. And you can look at it on the back to make sure it's the real deal, the pure thing. Also, if it costs you about $50, you know it's the real thing because it's expensive. All right, so, so now I, I found uh, the, the, the basic color for my munchkin's uh, forehead. So I might make a note saying middle value is here, okay. And then, now I want to go and I want to find what the highlight color is. So if I look for the highlight, I want to go lighter than that. Highlights can either go warm or cool. So I'm just going to go for one of these basic grayer tones. That's too dark. Got to go way lighter. It gets to be so much easier like this. That's a little too gray. When I put that down, I see it if I if I um, hold it back from the uh, light so you don't have a reflection, I could go a little bit lighter, maybe a little more chroma, so more color. So I might have to venture into some of my other colors to actually get it. But if I want it to stick with just these three in white, this would be the color I would use. Oops. What color did you? How did you create that? So what I did, uh, what I did was I just added a little more white to it. So now I have these two colors right here as my base. So I have this, which could go lighter. If I want to pop it more, I might be tempted to add a hint of yellow and white to it which could give it even more pop. So I might come over here and say that that's a little bit snappier with just a bit of yellow and a little white. One thing you may wanna note on your highlights is that in the highlights, you might wanna use lead white. It just has more warmth to it and it has a little more pop. Okay, so then the next step is the shadow color. So we're gonna stick with our same colors down here and just see where are we in terms of value. Had a little accident, thank God um, Jessica's here. <laughs> so if I put that down, wow, 
that like just nailed it. Now, in the cheek area, I may want to go a little redder so I can add a little hint more warmth. That's really pretty. So that could be one part of my shadowing color. So now you can see, you know what this starts to look like? And this is an exercise that's in the portrait book I wrote on uh, treaties on portrait painting. It's available, by the way, here's a little um, plug, <laughs> sorry, on Amazon as a digital version. But this looks like makeup. If you went to a, a drugstore and you bought face makeup, the liquid face makeup, and what I did is I put spots of face makeup on a paper and I had my students mix up those skin tone colors for different face makeup. That was such a great, awesome exercise. Now, the last part here are some of the grayer tones. So you're gonna notice that within the shadow areas, we might have some areas where they're a little on the gray side. So let's see if we can find those using this violet color mixed in to the other one. But maybe not, it may not be cool enough. So in that case, that's where I might use a little bit of my black and white. Quickly do a black and white scale to gray out the color a little bit. You don't wanna over gray it, but see if I put it into my mixture here, it's still not there yet. And a lot of this becomes intuitive. So as you're mixing, it's too gray. That's why having the dialogue as you're working is so important. A little light wouldn't hurt too. <laughs> okay, let's see where we are. It's getting there, it needs a little more color. Oh yeah. So the gray area is some really subtle notes. So, so how would you work? So let's say you were doing a portrait of, of Brigitte here. What would you do? The best way to start after you've done your drawing is to do what they call like a bocetto or a study. This is from Juliet Aristides and how she was showing uh, one of the workshops. So you would take your picture and you'd actually put in an overlay and build some of these color notes. Then you could tube, I would tube these colors. I would mix these up and label them. I'd label it highlight one, two, midtone one, two, and, and uh, shadow one or shadow gray. So that you already have them pre-mixed and then once you start to paint, you know what to do. You know, you're already, you're ready to go. This is such a killer way to start a portrait. Okay, so here we go with that. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing here with the acetate. Let's pick another person now. Um, let's see, I have James here. James worked down the street from me, from the studio here. And um, he used to walk by and one day I asked him if he wouldn't model for us. This is about, I don't know, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I finally convinced him to, to do it. What was interesting with James is he had color notes that were different all over his face. And I'm gonna point them out. And this happens a lot, uh, especially I find with not just African-American people, but um, people like even me that have a lot of freckles or uh, just different pigmentation on our skins. Um, so James has purple here. He had some yellow other places, a little more yellow in his neck. He's got a lot of reddish tones, but then the purple notes come in and then the warm, rich browns, you know, and then of course the grayer part from where his beard is reflection of the beard with the blue shirt. So he's got some gorgeous colors on his skin. The one I wanna focus on first is the purple notes because we have this iron violet. And um, if we just take the iron violet with some white and let's just see what it looks like on here. 
I mean, it's already really close. It's already super close. So I would probably add maybe a hint of the um, of the rust red with back into the purple and see where we go. That is like spot on. Okay, so James, the purple note is here. Now, this is this is fine for being exact and wanting everything to be perfect and exact. But let's say your portraits, you want to exploit it a little bit. You say, I see the purple a little stronger than that. And I, I remember it a little stronger and I want to push it. So what you would do is you would start with the color that you came up with. So let's switch over to this. Here's the color I came up with. And I want to exploit that color. So I'm going to go to one of my blues, ultramarine blue, and I'm going to pick the cad red instead of alizarin because cad red mixed with the blue gives you an earthier violet, okay, as opposed to, you know, the alizarin, which would be like this super strong violet. So now I have a real strong purple, which could easily um, go onto his face. I can just push it a little bit, a little cooler. So then I would put that color, I'm sure it's totally mixed, that color next to the other one to see how I want to fluctuate between the two. And then the reddish part on his nose area is back to this uh, rust red. It's like perfect. Have you noticed that through this whole mixing, most of what I'm doing is just adding white and the other three colors. I'm hardly going into my tried and true Apelli's palette or Zorn palette, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's, it's all coming from these reclaimed colors. So that's too dark. So I would go a little bit lighter. And in this case, I may have to add in a little hint of the cad red or the yellow. Let's see what happens with a little bit of it in the yellow and see what we get. That's a pretty color. It could go stronger. So let's do that. So this is going to be our nose note. But look at what a gorgeous tone that is and how we're getting, how different we are. But we all, you know, have the same blood running through our veins, but look at how many different colors we're coming up with. Let's find the last thing on him and then we'll jump to another uh, skin tone person. I want to get to as many uh, possibilities as I can tonight. Now, the highlight's not white. It's not pure white. If we were to put pure white here, that does not look right. That looks weird. It's pink. So we have to pick a pinkish color. So let's see what happens with maybe one of the iron and maybe a little bit of the red and see if we put enough white in it, if we can get close. It's a little too cold. When you want to find a color, you need to describe it with, tone, with terms like warm and cool. So then you know how to continue to adjust the color. So let's see, I just added cads, a cad red and yellow to that, I can put even a tiny bit more in that with a little cad red, cad yellow, and get a truer pink right on top. So that's a nicer note for James's um, highlight. It's actually perfect for his highlight. Okay, so we kind of have James, look at the beautiful value structure here for James. I and mean, that's crazy. Um, let's pick someone else. I'm gonna pick, um one that um i'm going to pick this one of al he, al since has passed on um what i like about this picture and i took this picture is the shadows in the face most people have problems how do i mix shadow colors for skin tones okay well first find the find the overall mid value and then let's go to the shadow, okay? So the overall mid value, clean your brush off if you're using the same brush. And you notice I'm, I'm not even using my palette knife to mix up all these different tones. 
I'm I'm really relying on um, on my brush. I, I feel like I can mix better that way. So he's got a ruddy skin tone. So I'm gonna go like with that, it's too dark. So I have to lighten that up. And let's see where we are if I lighten. Still, it's a little bit on the grayer side. The other thing too that happens in photography is the photography tends to warm things a little bit uh, unnaturally. So like if we looked at this picture of Ireland, for instance, you'll see how gray it is. Uh, and skin tone, by the way, is pretty gray. i show you, where's Ireland? This one is Ireland. And I, I painted her before. This is from a painting. Um, I did a painting of her, but you can see how gray the skin is. But we're gonna go back to Alan and we'll come to Ireland again. So let's see. So we're gonna go warmer. The biggest mistake I see all of us making in skin tones though is to go way too orange. And um, so you wanna try not to do that. Try not to err on the side of being, you know, like this orangey skin tone color. So let's see what we have here. It's a little, little better, but not quite. Let's see if we add a little more of the rust red and a little more white. See where we are. Oh, that's getting better over there for some of it. It's just because he's so darn pink and red. So we do have to, on this case, on this one, you would have to add some cad red to it. That's nice up there. So that's kind of a middle value. Okay, so I'm going to say Al is more there for his mid value. And his highlights are really light. And they have a lot of yellow in them. So he, here would be the highlight with even more, you could push the yellow even more on that. Remember, these are base colors on how to start. And then once you have the person in front of you, or you know, if all you have is the photograph, then you're going to tweak it as it goes. Um, so the shadow color, we're going to go back to our brown ochre and maybe the violet. It's a cooler color for the shadow. That's a little almost too cool. And the value is not accurate. We're moving straight across our grid pattern of our reclaimed colors. We're getting closer. This is actually here or here in the connecting to it's there. So I want to save that color as a good connecting color but the shadow has a little more oomph in it. Let's see what we can do here. <laughs> the light is not good on our palette here. <laughs> it's, it's a, uh, oh, there, oh, that's it. That's like totally it. Look at how dark this is for the shadow. See, I wouldn't have expected that. The other thing I want you to notice while we're doing all of this, my palette is gray and my canvas is gray so that the two are talking to each other. Ideally, I should be mixing, ideally I should be mixing color with my palette here so that you can see the color in, in the same light as the mixture is going. So to get this, so look at, this is Al, all right? The highlight, kind of a mid value and two values of his shadow tones. Now let's move over to Ireland real quick. Maybe one more person in us here. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Jessica, can you hold on? Didn't know you were going to be an assistant tonight. <laughs> All right. Oh, here we go. All right. The thing I like about this photo a lot, I love that it's very dramatic. I, I think it's boring to paint someone when the light is totally on their face and there's no structure or shadows showing. That's, that's boring. So, and let me do something, see if it'll work for this one. Let's put this up so you can see it better. All right. And then we don't need that anymore. So when you're, when you're mixing, 
if at all possible, if your palette can be at the same angle as your uh, canvas or your image, that's the ideal way to work. I designed a, a palette called a stand-up palette that we use. It's a, a wooden one that clamps onto your easel and it, it works great. It's like fail proof. So let's see what we can find with Ireland. So she's got some grayer, you notice these grayer colors here. So it's like, is that too gray? And then you go, yeah, it's a little too gray. So then we start to, to mess with the mixture a little bit. And we say, okay, well, where can we go to give it a little bit more? Oh, see, that's pretty darn good. So you start to say, yeah, I like that color. All right, so that would be, oh, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> All right, so that's gonna be, Ireland's white color, middle skin tone. Okay. Right. Then we're going to continue on. All right. See what's so great about the acetate is that you can just wipe it off and keep going. Right? So the next one would be the connecting half tone. If you were to tube all these colors, you'd have so much an easier time to paint. You'd see how your time to do a portrait would be cut completely because all the colors are already pre-mixed to help you out. That just nailed it. That is like perfect. All right, so let me do this gently. So that's the connecting color. A little on you see how gray those are man those are gray really gray violet okay and then we have a couple of shadow tones so let's see where the shadow is pretty dark so let's see what we can do here on the shadow but the shadow i feel has a little red in it but let's just test the value first nope that's too light so we're going to have to go much darker All right, still too light. All right. So here we go. We're going to get a little bit of our black. It's closer, but it's not close enough. You may want to add hint. So when I put that color on, I feel like it's too gray. Here we go. That has a little alizarin. That's it. That's it. Do you see the subtlety on this? Okay. So also, I wanted you to see how much better you can see color when it's standing up in the same angle as your painting. Does that make sense? Hopefully. All right, let's see who we have left. Any skin tones that you guys are curious about mixing? Um, let's see, here's my friend Teresa. I was a student too, I haven't seen her in a while. I'll have to tell her I'm using her as a model. <laughs> All right. Again, the photography has made it a little bit on the warmer side. But we can still get there with this. We can totally get some of these basic colors. That's too dark. So now we've got to go back to our value scale, scale it back to gray. So for her, she's got more color in her skin. So we may have to go to some of our other tones to add to it or go back in. It just keeps getting darker. Switch brushes. Are you, Cheryl, are you starting with rust red on this one? Yes. Okay. So if I take the rust red and let's, um, 
let's take this rust out just to see where we are. It's way too dark, obviously. Getting closer. So she has more paint. So then that's when I would go into a little bit of alizarin. Okay, that's totally great. Okay, so the, her middle value has a little more pink in it because of the lighting and also um, the photography changes things. So it's the same thing up here. You can see that it just melts in. You can't even see my brush stroke. By the way, that's my trick to teaching people how to paint greens. Um, whenever you're having trouble with greens in for uh, exterior work or you know, in plain air, you, what you do is you go around to all the bushes, you pick a leaf or two from each one, you tape it on a little panel and you start mixing. You take green off your palette too. You just mix it from blue, white and black and yellow, whatever. And you mix and you start painting on top of the leaf until you can't see your brush stroke. That's how you find greens. Same thing in skin tones on this. But like I said before, if you want to exploit an area like the cheek, you know, you might find that color and then say, yeah, but I want it to be a little bit sweeter, a little bit pinker, or like the end of the nose. I might want that to have a little hint more pink on it. So then I would go to that. And this one has just a touch more pink. There's not a lot of variation in um, the lighting here. We have a highlight that's just a little bit wider than um, the rest of it, but not by much. So that would be our highlight. And then the shadow is a little grayer, which would bring us back to the um, to the iron, the iron violet, and maybe put in a little hint of the uh, red. But any of those iron violets would work nicely on a shadow, especially if you didn't want to go too dark. This is already pretty dark. So that would be Teresa. And then the last one I'm going to show you real quick is someone very Anglo, very wasp, <laughs> like me. Um, it could either be the doctor. No, I'm going to pick Carol. Carol was a student too, haven't seen her in a long time, miss her, but we did a, a, a photo session once. All my students were, um, I wanted them to do self-portraits. So we set up lighting. Um, you know, as you can tell, Carol's very fair, you know, and she tends to have that little bit of a ruddy color in her. So I would start by getting, figuring out the yellowish highlights and kind of pinking them up a little bit. So if we took yellow into our rust color, and let's see where we are there. Pretty good. So that would be a little bit on Carol's right there. You can see how light that is. You could even go more yellow if you want to exploit it. So you could say, yeah, but let's push the yellow a little stronger in her. and. Um, and that could go there totally. You could also put in a alizarin to make the pinker part go. But let's let's see how we can work with the iron oxide color and a little bit of cad red to get her skin tone. It's a little brown, so I'm not seeing that. It's a little too brownish. I'm really trying not to use too many other colors when I'm mixing this. Oh, that's pretty. So that could be a pretty color to have. Again, this is almost unnatural because of the photography in it. In a case like this, you'd want to bring in some grayer tones onto the side, like, like over there, where that's where maybe this um, iron violet could be a really lovely, that could be a really lovely color, maybe a little bit stronger. Yeah. 
Let's see what that looks like on this panel. So something like that on the side. And sometimes you don't know until you see these colors on the, on the portrait itself, whether or not they're gonna work. So the trick for you is going to be um, to pick a, pick a photo you want. If you want one of mine, I'm happy to share. Um, the other photos I have with me that we didn't get to um, are Shadi. She's uh, from Iran. So you can see a little bit of the olive skin. So when they have olive, more olive skin, the neck tends to be a little more yellow. That's where you might bring in a little bit of the brown ochre with yellow ochre to try to get that color. Let's see. Yeah, so that would be more the neck color for Shadi. And, um, and then, you know, she's got some nice variations, like it's cooler in here, like this is more that violet, that iron violet. You're, you're going to start to love these colors because they just do it for, I mean, that's like totally it. This is her inside of the, the nose, the gray area right here, you know, and then the, the pinker cheeks. Again, we just go back to our, you know, warmer red color. That's too dark. So you have to go lighter and see a little pinker. Yeah. Yeah, into the cheek. So, I mean, you can just do so many variations on this. It's endless. And if you tube the colors, if you're going to actually do a portrait of somebody you know, I can help you, you know, with it online here. And you know you can send it to the Padlet, up to upload it to Padlet. We can all give you some feedback and tell you what needs to happen in order to make it right. Oops. So now an artist that came here uh, early on was Graydon Parrish. If you've ever seen his work, it's crazy amazing. He's incredible, and he's a real proponent of the Munzel color system. Not only that, before he does any painting, he spends days just mapping out the colors. So like Juliet did in this demonstration here, where she took a master, you know, copy image to do a quick bocetto to, to come up with the colors. This would be another time if you were doing a master copy or something like that, where you'd want to um, come up with the colors, you know, like we're doing here and then tube them so that you have them later. It's not like you're gonna do a paint by number because that's not what we want you to do. But it's, it's basically, basically when, you, when you've got your person in front of you here and you go, okay, I know I'm, my mid-tones are gonna be somewhere in here, somewhere here, and then I'm gonna push the reds a little bit and then I'm gonna go into the neck color, which is gonna be you know, a little more yellow and then bring in some shadows. You know, it, it just is gonna make it simpler than having to mix every single innuendo if you have the basics and i'm not saying this is all you would need to paint you know uh my munchkin because you, she's got a lot of other colors in her face so but these if i got those five mixed up boy would that make it easier ton way easier just to have that ready to go so my challenge to you is to buy these colors and help support this um, movement of taking something toxic and turning it into art, turning it into something incredible that you know all of us can use to make something beautiful out of it later. Um, and then it, it's just know that you, you're taking your doing your part to clean things up a little bit. Isn't that an awesome thing, right? So Carol, um, could you go back to the other camera really fast? Yeah. On say the, the munchkin or the African-American gentleman with the four tabs, use the second one, with the four tabs of color, would you take notes on how you actually mix that? Because on some of those you actually use, it looks like you use three colors uh, to get the one color. And so most, would you- Most of the colors I mixed for these 
were all based on those three colors in white. Then I started to add in, I had to add a little bit more in, but then remember I said, if you want to push the purple, right. that's where you would go with a little bit more Elizra, I mean, ultramarine and then the cad red. You could put what you put on it. That's fine. You don't have to, but if you want to, sure, why not? No, I guess what I'm saying is, as a calculation, I know you know how you blended those, all of those colors, but I just wondered if you, if it was a real portrait you're going to do, would you actually write down notes just to say the midtone? No, I, I not mix. me, not me, because I use the same palette always. Right. Okay. So I don't usually go out of my way to find a, a an odd color or like, oh, this one I use sap green or king's blue in it. You know, I don't normally do that. So okay. I, I use the same thing over and over. This is new for me doing the, um, the reclaim colors. And the reason I did that is when I first bought them and I started mixing out, I'm like, wow, you can already get great skin tones just by mixing it out with white. You don't have to even do much to it. And you already got it nailed, you know? Mm. So that's what I love about it. So oh. please, I challenge you. And then the next session, we're going to start by doing some real rough in on how to start blocking in uh, an image. And I might do a couple. I might show you how to block in quick um, and to get the likeness on some of these. And then you use your image, though. I, don't, I want to really encourage you to, to find your own image that you'd like to paint. And I'll help talk you through it.